And well, thank you everyone for having me. Uh, I'm gonna give you a quick talk for the following 15 minutes about inner source trainings. Uh, I've been working in a group that is implementing inner source and we want to help people to understand inner source better and faster. So we're developing, we're in the middle of developing this program called inner source trainings. And on the following 15 minutes, I will tell you why and how and all the questions you might have about this program. Um, a little bit about myself. My name is Emmanuel Orozco. I work in this group uh, called Adeo. We are the European version of Home Depot, if I think that's the most accurate definition. We have Adeo is a holding company of three smaller companies, uh, Leroy Merlin, Brickman, and Weldon. Uh, but basically, we sell stuff for your home, like kitchen or garden or etc. <laughs> Um, these, uh, uh, companies have online stores and we have, um, physical stores. So, uh, in these physical stores and online stores, we have developers like software engineers working in this, um, in this, uh, in these applications. We have over 3000 developers working from 15 different countries. So when you're starting, uh, inner source program with all that many people, well, uh, you of course want to push them and help them to learn whatever it's of inner source a little bit faster or more effectively. So that's what the program is, and I will tell you in a little bit. Uh, but first, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've been working as a software engineer for eight years, uh, computer science graduate, and i am been working as a developer advocate for the last year, particularly in the Avea group. Uh, I've also worked as a professor, as a teacher in different coding schools, uh, teaching different stuff from them, backend, full stack, et cetera. And of course, when you merge all these three skills in a single <laughs> job posting of position, well, you end up with this educational program that, yeah, I will tell you how, how I started the, creating this program. So first, uh, how this training looks like, okay? Basically, it's an online session uh, between four and eight people, okay? It's 90 minutes long, and we started this program four months ago. Uh, I... Is tell the people the time and the hour. They will group up together. I have some slides prepared and I discuss with them what is inner source, the benefits, uh, you know, defining some roles, giving some best practices. We do some exercises, we do some uh, quiz to validate the learning, etc. cetera. Um, why to do this? Well, as I've been saying before, the first concern is to speed up the training uh, process or like the, the training uh, time. We detected that uh, if you have some video or you have some text to read about how to do the inner source on how to implement it, et cetera, sometimes people are just too busy. They're just too busy to, to read through the contents, to, you know, to start doing this self-development program for their projects or for their countries. So just telling them, come here at this time and this hour for 90 minutes and learn everything there is from the, at the beginning about inner source is more effective to, for example, create more inner source projects and move forward existing projects that we have in the company, etc. Uh, a second one uh, will be the noise with C-level executives. Uh, we did a couple of weeks ago, we did uh, an interesting session for um, for C-level executives where we explain what is inner source. That normally, for example, the chief product officer or the chief uh, financial officer, they're not part of the same flow uh, of like creating products, right? Creating digital products. So when they come to the trainings and they learn in 30 minutes what is inner source, they're more prone to give you more resources when you need them, like money or time or, or more like uh, coverage or like they, they tend to speak up more with their peers about what you're doing with the, your inner source program. So that's quite helpful. And last but not least, the involvement of more countries in your inner source program is super helpful. That means gathering more feedback. For example, as I mentioned, the group has 15 over 15 countries uh, working with, uh, with the companies, right? But most of the tech decisions are held on one or two countries, mostly France, because we're a French company. So when you start having people from other countries coming to your seminars and like the trainings and giving them giving feedback, listening about your program, they tend to give you more feedback and how the program works. So that's quite valuable as well to, to understand if your proposal for your program, for your inner source program is valid for their context or not or there's some things to change, it's super valuable to have this feedback from, from other countries. 
Now, uh, I will just like to jump straight away on the, on the elements to add on the trainings. As I mentioned before, I separate the trainings in three parts. We have theory, theoretical part, we have the practice part, and we have an exercise. In the theory part, you can cover points like basic points, like what is inner source, some benefits. I have some nice diagrams, for example, where I like to compare the classical way of working versus the inner source way of working. Uh, having some benefits, the project roles, uh, like having the trusted contributors, having uh, this core team, etc. Uh, something that it was quite like very demanded was to have a checklist on like how to start doing inner source right away. So having this is quite quite helpful for for product owners and project managers. Uh, and after the theory part, we have a practice part where we cover um, mainly two exercises. The first one is how to convert a non-inner source friendly project to an inner source friendly project. Okay. And this is super helpful for product managers. And we have another exercise that is like uh, uh, send a contribution directly to an inner source friendly project. That means reading the documentation, reading sometimes the contributing.md file and doing this Whole, a whole process of contributing to an inner source project. Uh, and that's mainly for devs. As you can see, there is two types of profiles here. We have the trainings uh, focus all uh, for product managers and for developers. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this in, in a minute. And finally, we have the exercise. Uh, there is a platform that I recommend. It's called Gemkit, uh, which basically do interactive quizzes uh, with time constraints. And the faster you answer, the more points you get. It's quite fun. It's super effective. It used to be Kahoot, you know, it used to be this other company, but now it's, 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 it's you have to pay. So GameKit is still free. So I recommend this uh, platform if you want to implement your uh, quizzes or exercises for, for your trainings. Uh, so yeah, I was mentioning that we have two profiles. We have the product managers and we have the developers. Uh, and you will be asking, is that the same type of training? The answer is no. Uh, the reason of that is, of course, because they have different needs. A product manager will need to learn a little bit. Um, there are some things that they share. They need to learn both of them, for example, what is inner source or what's the benefits. But they need some particular like uh, questions that they need to be asked. Uh, for that, we created two versions of the program. The first one for developers is called uh, Inner Source Dojo, and product manage and for product managers and product owners, we have the Inner Source Academy. Okay, so same length, just a little bit different slides with different content, uh, but some content is similar. So I'll show you what is the type of customization which uh, we did for different profiles. So for product managers, we add some numbers. Uh, product people tend to ask you a lot about the tangible benefits of doing Inner Source. So for those people, we track the number of contributions done to inner source projects. Uh, we tracked as well the number of impacted projects doing inner source. Uh, if in your country you don't, or like in your program in your company you don't have you know access, uh, uh, existing program where you can get these numbers, because by the way we've been doing inner source for the last four years, so there's some some numbers to play with. Uh, I recommend to get some potential candidates for like how many contributions, potential contributions, how many potential uh, impacted projects you will you will get. Uh, we also like to give some tools for product managers. How to, we, for example, in the trainings, we coach them to have uh, open roadmaps where people can see what is the uh, what is the work to be done on the project in the following three, six, one year. Uh, we coach them how to do these roadmaps. Uh, we coach them and, for example, should we use GitHub versus Jira? This kind of stuff that product managers sometimes they, they wonder. In our company, for example, we have uh, Jira by default. But there's companies I prefer to work with GitHub. There's companies I prefer to mix a little bit of both. You can tweak your training at, depending on your uh, product context, so pretty good. Uh, we also provide them a checklist to start right away. So we have some uh, elements to be added that all the inner source projects have like for example what to write in the readme how to generate proper documentation uh how to contribute uh how to write a proper contribute.md file where people can uh, answer questions about the project or the contribution flow etc now uh for the developers they're a little bit less uh product oriented of course and they're more like doing stuff <laughs> so we tend to answer more uh questions like this how to pair a program with inner source projects, how to create documentations for inner source project, how to do code reviews, do you have any best practices, tips? Uh, how do I know if my project idea is good for inner source? Because sometimes developers themselves bring a lot of good ideas, but they don't know if it's a good candidate or not. So you just have some checklists or you can guide them if the process is, uh, is good enough, if the idea is good enough. Uh, you can also ask 
how do you get time to work in inner source projects for my manager? Uh, very common request because sometimes developers are too busy. So, you know, these kind of questions that, of course, will vary depending on companies. Maybe your company has a different process than mine. But, you know, having this structure of like this empathetic uh, perspective of being on this developer side could be felt helpful for answering these questions. You can also provide some tools. Uh, we have a CLI command to create an inner source compatible project right away. It's just a GitHub command uh, that creates some files and then commits the result. Uh, these kind of tools that are super helpful for developers to getting started, you can add them on your training. Super helpful as well. Uh, now, uh, we've been doing these projects, these trainings for the last four months. So, of course, I learned a couple of things. <laughs> and I have some advice for you if you want to uh, start this project or these trainings in your company. Uh, the sweet spot is six people per session. Uh, it could be product managers or developers. And uh, that tends to be the right spot between, you know, because we only have 90 minutes. So sometimes people like to discuss some to topics and that takes time. And if you have more people, you take more time. And if you have less people, there is not enough discussion. So six people is a sweet spot. Um, ask a lot of questions. Of course, in your training, uh, I like to, because as I mentioned before, one of the reasons we started doing this uh, program is to gather feedback from other countries. Uh, and if you don't ask the questions, you miss that opportunity. So don't speak longer than 15 minutes by yourself. Every 10, 15 minutes, ask questions. What do you think about this? Do you have any ideas? Uh, does it make sense? You know, these kind of questions that embrace people like participating, uh, do them. It's, and quite often, it's quite quite valuable. And just be writing down all the results so you can discuss them with, you, with your team later on. Uh, another one is praise the feedback. Uh, sometimes when I ask, what do you guys think about this uh, initiative? We get hard fear feedback because sometimes people will be like, that's not good. That's not going to work. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's hard to hear that, that your work is not uh, good enough. And that's okay. Because if people give you feedback, it means people care. So I just encourage them to give me the hardest they can so we can mediate. Of course, uh, we can make things better. There is a tool that I like. It's called openfeedback.io, which basically is like a big survey that has some questions about uh, the training and the program. And you send this link. It's a link that you share at the end of your training. And if people don't want to share this on person or on camera, you can get the feedback after the session is finished. Uh, the last one is product manager and product ma owner training is way, way harder than developer training. Uh, plan accordingly. <laughs> and the reason it's harder is because they have more decisions to take usually, these product managers or product owners. And because of that, they tend to get like, need more context or more information to be sure that they're making the right decision. So that's why they make uh, more questions and it's, sometimes it's harder. So be prepared with a good like section of frequently asked questions or like, uh, you know, like give extra time for questions uh, for these kind of sessions because they tend to last longer because people have more um, questions than developers. Uh, now, as I mentioned, we've been doing this program for four months. So, of course, the scaling up is quite important uh, because we are being getting requests to doing trainings in different countries by many teams. And sometimes it, the, the, my, I'm just doing it by myself and with a, with a partner. So sometimes scaling up is important. So the first one is training trainers. Uh, this is actually one of the uh, one of the results that we have from the program. I'll share in a minute. But there's people that are interested in uh, having or sharing inner source in their respective country. So we train them, or we will train them to train other people. We just provide them some press kit, some uh, templates uh, on presentations, and they can just do their own training. Having a self-register flow like the following, it's also super valuable. It's a spreadsheet where people can see the available uh, dates and they can just click on a link, write their email, and they're good to go for the session. We just send them the calendar invite a little bit later, but we don't have to do this by ourselves because it's very, very time consuming. And create all the training for being remote first is also quite valuable. Uh, that means saying no to in-person, it's really good because uh, we have a lot of countries and you can just do three, four different sessions in a week with different time zones, with different people. So having all of your resources, uh, it's in, for remote only, it's quite valuable. I don't see much benefits of doing in-person in trainings in my experience. Uh, now, what we learned about the program, uh, as I mentioned before, we have an inner source advocate program. It's people that are more interested in doing uh, inner source in their countries and sharing and spreading the values of inner source in their context. So we're training them to, uh, to do that. 
uh, the design of the slides also is quite important. As you can see, I'm not the best like designer or expert on doing slides, uh, but the, there's people that care, or they like, I prefer the content, but there's people that also like the design. So we evolved, for example, this to having some more images and having be beautiful colors or like some nice typography. This kind of stuff is quite important for, for people sometimes. We hire, we, we got a designer to help us design these uh, slides. And also we learned about doing a lighter version of the training. As I mentioned, it's normally 90 minutes, but we learned to do a 30 minute session where we only share uh, the basics, like what it is it, the benefits, and maybe some projects doing inner source at the moment in the company, and that's it. Uh, we don't do the exercises or we don't do the quiz because this is mostly the, the shorter, shorter uh, trainings are for C-level executives, so they don't have the time. So we just have to go faster just to spread a little bit about the values and they're good to go. And yeah, finally, some numbers that I have for you. Uh, I have, we started this training in June with the dojo. We have eight sessions for the dojo with 60 people trained. Uh, for the academy, we had six people, uh, six sessions with 50 people trained from six different countries. Uh, and from these uh, countries, we recruited, we managed to recruit four, four different ambassadors in the uh, inner source advocacy program. So as you can see, it's, it's, it's people that really like the program, really like the concept, that never heard about it before, and they want to participate and be more involved in the, in the program itself. Pretty cool. Finally, we had uh, two new inner source projects created because we we ask people what they think about the program and did they have at the end of your presentation, and you ask if they have any ideas. And sometimes people come to you and they say, oh, I want to do this project. So we created two new two new projects doing doing this question, and yeah, I think we're still perfect timing. Also, sixty minutes, so I dedicate some time for questions or open the discussion if you have some learnings to share as well. And yeah, that will be on my site on my presentation, uh, guys. I hope uh, I hope you like it. And uh, thank you very much.